discuss some of the basics of dynamic routing protocols. So let's uh, talk a, about a few of the details of distance vector protocols. So I mentioned uh, RIP and eGRIP as some uh, distance vector protocols that are currently used. The difference being with the distance vector uh, between distance vector protocols and link state protocols is distance vector uses hop count. So what does that mean? So hop count is how many routers away is a network. So if we have four routers, we have two networks on each side, and then we have these routers interconnected. This network to this router this network here to this router is directly connected. To this router, this network would be one hop away because there's one router in the way. To this router, to this network, it would be two hops away because there's one router, two routers. So that's kind of how that works. So you can go up to a maximum of 15 hops in RIP. That's how it determines uh, how large your network should be and the reason for that is it will uh, prevent looping uh, similar to the time to live on a packet. Uh, if you go beyond that it'll drop the packet. So for some reason if a packet were looping around in some routers it would uh, hop 15 times, no, that would be it. Anything beyond 15 are not added uh, into a routing table. So that's something to consider when you are expanding your network. If you happen to have a RIP-based uh, product, uh, RIP-based network, and you have a, some sort of interconnection between networks that is 15 routers across, if you go to 16, it's not going to work. So uh, that's probably where you'd want to switch to a different protocol anyway, but uh, that is uh, something you can tweak and uh, can you know adjust your uh, and adjust your network design to uh, accommodate. One of those distance vector protocols I mentioned is RIP, and there's RIP version one and there's that version two that I mentioned. RIP version one works off of the broadcast. RIP version 2 uses multicast. So things were very simple originally. You had that classful addressing, you had classful routing. It would simply broadcast that traffic out uh, to all the other devices. It's very simple. Uh, with RIP, and this is where the multicast addresses really come into play is with these distance, uh, not just distance vector, but dynamic routing protocols in general. Uh, the idea being, remember, with multicast addresses, uh, it, the network card will listen to certain IP addresses for multicast based upon what services it's running. So, for example, if you're running RIP, then it will listen for the RIP multicast address. If you're running eGRIP, it'll listen to the eGRIP address, and, and so on. So that's kind of where multicast comes into play in a everyday routing environment uh, outside of some of those examples like ghosting or video or something like that. So some specifics about RIP since we're here. It updates every 30 seconds as you saw me scribbling on the last video. So every 30 seconds uh, it will send to that multicast address. and then it'll do that from router to router to router. It will use that uh, hop count as the metric for the routes. So that's how it knows how far away a certain network is and that 15 is your max. So obviously you have to be listening to this multicast address in order to receive RIP version 2. There's also that IGRP, as I mentioned, 
and EI GRP. Those use the diffusing update algorithm. So that's dual. That's something that's touted by Cisco as a um, very nice algorithm that they use to determine uh, the paths to take and to have backup paths ready at, at any one time. The dual algorithm does that for you. EGRIP has a series of features that RIP does not. Uh, it has bounded triggered updates. So when I was talking about the differences uh, previously, I mentioned I mentioned how um, whoops how not only it will send out uh, it, it'll it'll has a kind of a hybrid methodology where it will uh, update when it needs to or it'll it'll update about certain links and things like that. That's the bounded triggered updates in eGrip. Uh, so that's something that is not a feature of RIP. What that does is kind of give you a similar uh, ability to OSPF where it will send updates about things that have changed only to those routers that need it. That's what the whole bounded triggered updates mean. So it's triggered when it's needed and it's bounded to only devices that need to know about it. Uh, so that's different from RIP where it's every 30 seconds everyone gets a whole copy of my routing table and I'm done. So it's a bit uh, more intelligent. There's a hello, keep alive. Uh, a lot of protocols uh, you'll see going forward use some sort of hello or optional hello, keep alive uh, mechanism. So it will maintain a uh, adjacency with another router and it'll keep that connection open so that it can send and receive this, uh, these triggered updates. It builds a topology table similar to the OSPF method but not exactly the same of every single, li every single link. The main idea being it saves backup paths. This is the big fancy feature in eGrip is it has, it figures out one way to get to a network and then it will also save that other way to get to the network in that topology table so then when something uh, goes wrong it will switch over to that backup path so that's one of the, the nice features for eGrip it also offers fast convergence remember I keep talking about convergence it's a uh, major problem with routing protocols such as RIP where they take so long for changes to update. Uh, also with ones like BGP and such, uh, when you go and look into that, you know, convergence is a major problem. Uh, eGrip offers a very fast convergence time. It's also layer 3 independent. So you can run IPv4, you can run 6v6, you could run IPX over this if you really wanted to, you could run Apple Talk, you could share whatever, what you, whatever you want, any sort of layer 3 protocol through uh, eGrip. So that's a nice feature of that. Uh, I'll get into OSPF and some of how the, that's similar to some of these features with the eGrip uh, in a future video or two. Uh, I think next up we'll talk a little bit about RIP, maybe show a configuration even though they don't really teach it anymore technically. I think I'll show you anyway just uh, because I'm, I'm old school like that.